All right, so day 10, um, day 10 was interesting. We left Effingham, which at this point, like, I think I woke up that morning and I was like, this sucks. I don't know. I didn't, like, at the time, like, I didn't feel, like, dehydrated or something, but I knew something was off, like. I think physically I was off, but I didn't know why. So mentally I was just saying like, okay, this is mental or something. Like I'm just not feeling it today. So I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna push through. And so I started riding that day and whatnot. And then leaving Effingham, like I got passed by this van with a big trailer and it was all stickered up. And I was like, what is this? It said bikeandbuild.org. And I was like, what? well, that's kind of cool. Like that's coincidence and I'm doing my bike trip and I see this van or something and then the first 10 to 15 miles I start getting passed by like all these cyclists and John's texting me up the road and he's like yeah like there's a bunch of other people riding I'm like what so we're riding and riding and I'm getting passed by these people left and right and I'm like who the heck are all these people riding and then I catch it or I didn't really catch up but the last group of them is like three ladies they're like, hey, you touring? And I'm like, yep, going to Oregon. And they're like, woo! And I was like, yay! And then I forget how, but somehow I ended up like catching up to them or something. And I ended up riding with three of them and just talking a little bit with them. And uh, they, you know, they just tell me a little bit about their organization. And they were like, you know, in six miles up the road, we're stopping to have lunch. And they said, you know, if you're coming by that way, you know, go ahead and stop and eat with us or whatever. So I did, I caught up to them up the road and uh, turns out there's like 30 something of them. And I'm like, whoa, like this is awesome. Like a whole, like a whole group of people. And so I got to stop and I ate lunch with them. I didn't really eat lunch. I just ate my energy bar and kind of sat down and just talked to them, told them about my project, learned a little bit about theirs. And yeah, they're just a huge group. I think it was like half and half guys and girls. And, uh, yeah, then one group was getting ready to take off, and it was a couple of the ladies I'd been riding with earlier, and they were like, you know, like, oh, why don't you come with us or whatever, and so I did. Like they said, they were going at a slower pace, so I went ahead and rode with them because they're all on touring bikes and road bikes, which are meant to be faster than my bike, but you know they weren't planning on riding as far that day, so I was like, you know, that's cool. I'll ride with them. Plus riding with them through these flat plains means that I have somebody to draft off of anyone that knows cycling or even NASCAR it's a lot like NASCAR if you can draft off of somebody it makes it a lot easier for you to pedal I've heard that it's about 30 percent easier so you know a third of your energy can be saved so it made my day better with pedaling I was you know having an easier time of it plus I wasn't having to deal with the headwinds because I had somebody to block the headwinds for me, which it's not really selfish, but it's just strategy, I guess, for riding. So it was cool to have all these people to ride with. And I got to meet a few more of them, got to hear some of their stories and why they got into this program. Uh, you should check out bikeandbuild.org to really fully understand what they're about. But uh, basically, it's an organization where there's like eight or nine different groups that ride across the country it's a couple hundred riders and they ride across the country through different routes and they stop in specific places and like habitat for humanity they help build houses and shelters and stuff like that so i guess they have a pretty cool project going on it's been going on for a decade or so so you know it's a very rewarding program for the individuals that partake in it and uh yeah got to ride with a bunch of them throughout the day I ended up following them all the way to where they were staying that night and you know I waited for John there and got all set for the last 30 miles of my ride and you know they've been asking me you know like oh how are you feeling like how are you doing 100 miles a day like that's crazy you know like that's a lot to be riding every day and I was like like I don't know like that's just what I had set myself up for and then like they kept asking me like how are you feeling and then I start like every time they'd ask me that I started like feeling crappier and crappier and just getting worse and worse. And like they stopped, 
at 50 miles because they came from the same town I did that morning, which oddly enough, I didn't even see them in that town. But uh, yeah, I still had 50 miles to go. So I took off, I think I made it another 30 something miles. And I was going through this paved, or well, no, it wasn't even paved, a gravel trail through the woods and through some fields on the way to St. Louis. But it got to the point where I was going six or seven miles an hour and I was stopping like every mile, getting off my bike and physically laying on the ground, laying there for like a couple minutes. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, I was feeling so exhausted, so tired. I didn't feel like dehydrated. Like I know dehydrated, I've been dehydrated before. So like, I know how that feels. And like, my dad was like, getting concerned about it and everything I'm like like this isn't dehydration like this is something different like I don't know like I felt like it wasn't a mental game but it also wasn't dehydrated so I don't know what was going on and I started thinking about text messages my mom had sent me about um bulking up on calories and you know how much food am I eating and whatnot and I realized like I've been really slacking on how much I've been eating and I think that's what caught up to me is I wasn't really slacking, but I was just getting by on just enough food to get me through. And I think for the first week that was okay. But by week two, like it was catching up with me. I wasn't taking in enough calories. I wasn't eating enough hearty meals to keep myself energized for the ride. And so it really caught up with me. I ended up just bonking and bonking for those of you who don't know, it's, it's basically when your body crashes, like, I just hit my lowest point ever right there. And like, I couldn't, there was no way I was gonna make it. I made it to Edwardsville, which is like five to 10 miles east of St. Louis. You can see St. Louis from it. So John picked me up when I got out of the trail system. And I was like, dude, like there's no way I'm riding the rest of this. And he was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't ride anyways. Like, I don't know exactly how bad San Francisco is, but, or, St. Louis, whatever. They're all the same now. Anyways, so we were like, St. Louis is probably not a good place to be. And we've heard from further down the road that now St. Louis, yeah, being on the east side of St. Louis at night is not somewhere we want to be. So I guess it was a good decision, but we packed up the bike and then drove to the other side of the city where we stayed behind another church and did the usual camp out. No big deal, but you know, while we were there, we, I got on the phone with my dad and everything, and he was like, you know, take it easy the next couple of days. Um, I put out a blog, you know, about what was going on, how I was feeling and everything. So I was getting advice here and there from people. And I was like, all right, well, I got to step up my calorie intake and everything. I got to take it more serious and you know, eat more food. But I was still like, whatever I'll just eat more you know I wasn't gonna stop riding and then the next day yeah I'll get to that in the next video you'll you'll want to hear that <laughs> so yeah